So to continue to take position on the duration of DAPT, I invite Dr. Dharam Kumbani, uh, Assistant Professor of uh, Medicine and a rising star in international cardiology. Uh, I'm proud to be associated with him, and he's going to debate and present his logic and reasoning for short-term duration is preferred after PCI. Take it away, Dharam. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about short-term uh, DAPT and why that's preferred for most patients after PCI. Uh, these are my disclosures. <clears throat> so, you know, I must say I'm really disadvantaged in this debate. You know, not only am I debating, you know, one of the giants in our field, um, he's also the world expert in antiplatelet therapy, as we just saw, you know, with this eloquent talk. And then also, I'm sandwiched between two of his talks. So he gives two talks, I get one talk, and I'm the, <laughs> I'm the, you know, the minion here. So I decided to reach out to some higher powers. And uh, in this, uh, you know, era of Star Wars, I went to Yoda, and he agreed with me. He said the confirmation bias strong with this one it is. And so he has a message for the audience, and he says, you must unlearn everything that you've just learned about anti therapy, <laughs> and you must give me, uh, you know, the ability to speak on this. And so uh, we, we sat down and we came up with a construct for this talk. And so my logic for this debate is that stent thrombosis, uh, point number one, stent thrombosis risk depends on the stent and the presentation. The, that shorter term DAP trials have been non-inferior for ischemic events while longer-term DAP trials have, been, uh, have shown a higher risk of bleeding. Bleeding is a risk factor for mortality, and then based on this, I hope I'll be able to convince you that shorter durations of DAP are better. So going to the first point in my logic is that, short, that stent, uh, excuse me, stent thrombosis risk depends upon the stent and the presentation of the patient. So we know that first-generation stents have a much higher risk profile for late stent thrombosis compared with uh, bare metal stents when we saw that both with the serolimus eluting and the paclitaxel eluting stents. And this is what led to, in 2006, the FDA, uh, uh, you know, uh, mandate and also then subsequently in the guidelines requiring at least 12 months of DAP for all patients undergoing DES-PCI. Now, I'm going to show you some data, but again, things to remember is we need to remember what kind of stents we're putting in our patients. Are they first-generation DES or second-generation DES? And also, what is the risk profile of the patient? Are they presenting with ACS, or do they just have stable coronary artery disease? So, um, <clears throat> you know, when we look at uh, a large network meta-analysis that was done by Sripal Bangalore and his colleagues, comparing all the different stents that we use in, you know, contemporary practice, over here you can see uh, are the different possible combinations, and I really want to focus your attention on the stents that we use contemporarily, that is uh, the cobalt chromium stents, the platinum chromium stents, and the zodro limus eluting stents. And when you compare them with both the first generation stents, they, they, all of them have a much better stent thrombosis profile as compared with uh, the first generation stents, no matter what the indication for the PCI is. The second point, as I mentioned, is that it really depends on what they present with. So if you, uh, again, irrespective of the type of stent you use, if you present with an ACS, your risk of MACE, your risk of death, as well as your risk of stent thrombosis is, is higher uh, uh, versus if you present with stable angina. So keeping that in mind, uh, the second point in my, uh, you know, in my logic is that we have seen from the, the short-term DAP trials that they are non-inferior for ischemic outcomes. So the largest trial on this was probably the optimized trial. This was about 3,000 patients that were randomized. These were all now, what I must point out is that these were very few ACS patients, all low-risk patients, all getting a second-generation DES. Uh, and they were randomized to three months versus 12 months of DAP. And what, uh, what we saw is that for the ischemic endpoint, there was no difference at 12 months between these durations of DAP. And then there were a couple of other trials as well, the Excellent trial and the Prodigy trial, both with about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 patients. And again, you can see that there was no difference for ischemic endpoints at one year with a shorter duration compared with a longer duration. But then when we looked at bleeding, um, the, it was numerically higher with the longer durations uh, in Optimize and Excellent, and certainly in Prodigy, it met, it met statistical significance as well. So the third point is that longer-term DAP trials have higher bleeding. And then, of course, uh, you know, this was before the DAP trial came out. This was a, a patient-level meta-analysis, including the three trials I showed and also the RESET trial. And they showed that um, there was no difference for MACE endpoints, but bleeding was significantly higher for longer durations compared with shorter durations. 
Um, and then, you know, uh, we had looked at this as well uh, in uh, network meta-analysis, looking at all the possible different combinations. And again, you can see that uh, compared, you know, 3 to 6, 3 to 12, 3 to 24, and so on, the longer the duration of DAP, the higher your risk of bleeding was. And of course, you know, Sunil just talked about the DAP trial um, and, you know, the risk of bleeding. And no matter what metric you looked at for bleeding, there was a higher risk of bleeding with longer beyond one year. There was a higher risk of bleeding compared with shorter durations. Now, as he also pointed out, we must remember that these were all patients who had had no bleeding events leading up to one year. So for the average patient that we see, the risk of bleeding is likely to be much higher with long-term therapy. Now finally, uh, you know, the last point, which says bleeding is a risk factor for mortality. Now this is where I get a little bit of a break. It's sort of like a home run, because, you know, when you go back and when you go to uh, PubMed and you say bleeding and Sunil Rao, who is, you know, world expert in this, you will come up with 127 hits. And, you know, he's done some of the most seminal work in this field, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, in probably every medical journal that we read today. Uh, and these are just some of his, uh, some of his uh, you know, uh, seminal work on this. And you can see that what he's systematically shown us is that bleeding is bad for us. It causes more mortality. And then even when you look at the DAB trial, um, you know, there was a higher risk of death, and especially non-cardiovascular death with longer durations of DAPT compared with shorter durations of DAB. And so, you know, one of my fellows came to me and says, yes, but, you know, it reduces the risk of stent thrombosis. And so I said, I don't care. Because if I have a therapy that makes my patients die more, I would rather care about that than whether or not it reduces stent thrombosis, no matter what the mechanism is. And even when you look at the, uh, you know, the DAP trial, um, what you see is that the non-cardiovascular death is predominantly driven by bleeding. If you look at the, uh, at the text, it says, bleeding-related deaths, uh, 11 deaths in the group that continue to receive thyropyridines versus three in the placebo group were related mainly to fatal trauma. So it doesn't matter how they died, but if they, which you know, happens to all our patients, if they were unlucky to be in a car accident or some other thing, if they are on DAP, they're going to, they are more likely to have fatal bleeding and die from that. And then again, um, uh, uh, Sunil showed this. This is the, the, the uh, network uh, meta-analysis from Palmerini and groups. And again, this is not only from that where we see the mortality signal. We see it when we put all of these trials together in a systematic review. We see that uh, being on DAP is, sorry, is, being a, is associated with 22% uh, increase in mortality, and the majority of that is driven by non-cardiovascular mortality. So uh, again, I hope I've convinced you uh, that uh, stent thrombosis risk depends on the stent and the, and the presentation of the patient, that short-term DAP trials have been non-inferior for ischemic outcomes, longer-term DAP trials have shown a higher risk of bleeding, uh, and bleeding is a risk factor for mortality, and, and therefore shorter durations of, of DAP are better for most patients that are undergoing TSPCI. So you know, I discussed this with Sunil, and I said, you know, this is, this is why I think shorter durations are better. And, uh, you know, he says, you know, I still don't believe it. I, I think, I think, I, I, I still don't believe it. And so then Yoda says, that is why you failed. Thank you. Fantastic. So now we know why he's so successful. He has higher powers behind him. So Sunil, your rebuttal and your points. Take it away. Yeah, it's very, I mean, that was fantastic. And in fact, I found myself almost convinced. Um, <laughs> So uh, let's talk a little bit about the opposite view, which is long DAPT duration is preferred. And I think the focus here is the word preferred. And I want you to ask yourself a question as we go through these slides, which is, if all things were equal, would you rather have your patient on longer term therapy or would you rather truncate it? So now my disclosures, fortunately or unfortunately, haven't changed in the last seven minutes. Um, <laughs> But you know, I'm a pretty agreeable guy. I mean, I don't really do a lot of debates. I tend to get along with people. So I had to look to some inspiration because I knew that this was going to be a very heated debate. So I decided to go back to Sun Tzu's Art of War to figure out how to win this debate. And he's, you know, Sun Tzu's, one of his rules is you have to know your enemy. If you know your enemy, then you don't have to fear the battle. So I had to figure out who is Dharam Kumbani. I had to figure out who this guy is. Well, he's pretty impressive. <laughs> He's got an MD with honors, his fellowship at the Brigham. He's an internationally recognized interventional cardiologist and outcomes researcher. He just saw what a great speaker he is. Um, and so this was very, very intimidating for me. I, I had to figure out how I was going to debate this guy. So I had to go a little bit deeper and think about more metaphysical ways of understanding who Dharam Kumbani is. So I decided to figure out what the name means. <laughs> 
It means that he's a restless intellectual person. He's ready to deal analytically with himself and his environment. He's a philosopher. He's ready to fight for it, as you saw. But he does tend to be a little bit too critical, I think. And maybe even set the goals a little too high. He wants the perfect outcome. And what's interesting is if you look at numerology, the number is seven, which is why he gave me only seven minutes for this debate. Okay? <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about the data. And I've, you've seen these slides before. I'm just going to show you what the, uh, a different interpretation, and one would argue perhaps the correct interpretation. So, what are our goals of therapy? We want to improve the quantity of life. That's why we're treating the patients. Uh, that come to us. We want to reduce mortality, we want to reduce recurrent MI, we want to reduce stent thrombosis, and we want to reduce stroke. We want to improve the quality of life. We want to reduce angina. We want to do it at the lowest reasonable cost and the lowest reasonable risk. So again, think about this. If the patient, the word again is preferred, not mandatory, preferred. If all things being equal, would you rather have your patient continue to take a therapy that reduces or meets these goals uh, rather than shorter therapy? We showed you the DAPT trial already. Uh, Dharam showed you some of the other smaller trials. The problem with small trials when they're found to be non-inferior is that they are underpowered. Type 2 error is an issue. So if you, have a, if you read a trial and it says that one therapy is non-inferior to the other, you have to ask yourself, is that because they're truly the same or is it because it was just underpowered to show a difference. This is really the only trial that was adequately powered, 20,000 patients, showing that long-term dual antiplatelet therapy does reduce stent thrombosis, does reduce major adverse uh, cardiac events at an expense uh, of an increase in bleeding risk. Okay. We know that he showed the extended DAPT after DES meta-analysis. I'm just going to repeat it for you here, again, showing that when you pull all the data together, uh, DAPT, prolonged DAPT does reduce ischemic events, the primary reason why patients come to us, which is to reduce ischemic events. Again, there is an increase in bleeding risk. And that's really, again, to summarize, it gives us the average result for a population. We need to individualize therapy, okay? So let me bring this home for you. Do you really think that this patient needs to get the exact same therapy as that patient? <laughs> I don't think so. So we do need to individualize therapy. And now we have a way to individualize therapy, taking the average result for a population and applying it. And again, this is the DAPT score, which should, soon should be impressed. So we can use this as, at the bedside to figure out which patients in whom Long DAPT is, again, preferred. The word is preferred, all things being equal. If you can minimize the bleeding risk, and we can do that now with the DAPT score and identify patients in whom long-term antiplatelet uh, anti therapy clearly reduces net adverse cardiac events and reduces ischemic events. So the goals of DAPT after PCI are to reduce ischemic events at an acceptable bleeding risk, and DAPT beyond six months clearly reduces MACE. And although the aggregate effect in all the patients studied in the trials is an increase in bleeding, we have the tools now to individualize therapy and achieve the best outcomes. And again, all things being equal, long-term DAPT is preferred after PCI. Thanks very much.